Marco Tempest is joining us. Hey, Marco. Hey, Ken. How are you doing? Hello, All right. everybody. All right. You, you know that you kind of wowed us last week. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you very much. So I prepared a few things. How, how, how much time do I have before I start? Oh, great. Wonderful. So I can do quite a bit of things. So before I start, I want to make sure that everybody can see the full screen. I put some arrows on the screen. So the ends of the arrows you want to see. So if you're on a tablet, you might have to flip it or you have to scale your Zoom window for this to perfectly work. And uh, I'm going to start with kind of introducing myself a little bit. So my name is Marco Tempest. I'm a creative technologist with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a director's fellow at the MIT Media Lab, and the extended reality innovation lead for Accenture. I work with augmented and virtual reality, gestural sensing, robotics, AI, and augmented intelligence. I use these technologies to create immersive storytelling experiences and to prototype the future, creating the illusion of future technologies as if they were possible today. Now, along the way, I helped other organizations bring their stories to life in ways that make them entertaining, informative, and memorable. Today, I'd like to give you a demonstration in which human and technology converge to provide an enhanced storytelling experience. Humans and machines are destined for ever closer collaboration. Artificial intelligence enables machines to understand the environment in which these collaborations will take place. But it's also important for machines to understand the people they share the space with. You, me, us, because unlike machines, we are unpredictable and sometimes irrational. So for a practical collaboration, we will need machines that can take account of our very human behavior. Now this goes beyond understanding our language. They also need to understand our gestures, our facial expressions, our moods and emotions because these are deductions that humans are making every day. It's how we all get along. New AI systems will be developed to do this. But what I'm about to show you today is a, a simple example of what two-way communication with, te with technology can produce. I'm going to do some interactive illusions. And as I do so, a software system will map my face, sense my gestures, and will join me in the storytelling process. It's important to remember that the images you're about to see are not pre-recorded. They are generated and triggered in real time and reacting to my actions. I would imagine that this kind of setup could be employed by storytellers, trainers, educators to communicate ideas more effectively. It's a way of bringing stories to life that makes them fun and memorable. So the first experiment is something that is inspired by my work at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And I would like you all to play along. So I'll hope you're gonna enjoy this. So let me fire this up. We're gonna do a little psychological experiment. So open your mind. And uh, I couldn't resist a little bit of video glitchiness. Okay, and uh, we're going to start. Here we go. And by the way, this, this piece is, is not an original idea for myself. It was inspired by Martin Gartner. Gartner specialized in mathematical recreations. He was a mathematician, but he was also an amateur magician and shared that kind of sense of wonder that guides almost everything I do. I found this idea in American scientific, uh, in scientific American magazine where Gartner had published an article. So this is how it goes. We're going to do a little traveling and I'd like you all to help. At the end of this trip, we'll arrive at a destination, but first, we need a starting point for our journey. So, in a moment, I want you to choose 
one of these squares. Don't tell me which one. Just pick one and put your finger on it. That's right. Come close to the screen and put your finger on any of the four squares. Done that? Perfect. Now keep your finger there. Now I don't know if you have a touch screen or not, but even if you did, it wouldn't help me. And to make things even more difficult, I'm gonna add some more squares. So, that's our neighborhood. But let's get more specific. Nine planets. And we're going to choose one of them at random. You still have your finger on the screen and it's touching one of the planets. In a moment, I want you to move your finger from planet to planet. You will be able to move side by side, up or down, but you cannot move diagonally. Got that? Okay. Let's begin. I want you to move your finger two times, side to side, up or down, from one planet to the other, two times. Excellent. I don't know why, but I'm not getting any signs of life from Pluto. To be honest, Pluto shouldn't even be here. Sorry, Pluto, you've been downgraded to dwarf planet. Goodbye. Eight planets remain. Let's try a longer journey this time. I want you to move your finger five times, starting now. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I think Jupiter is out of the game. I don't think you have your finger on Jupiter. Let's try moving two times again. Do it now. Now, I don't know how to say this, but I don't think you have your finger on Uranus, so it's gone. Move three times. Great. Uh, let's get rid of Neptune and Mercury. Four planets remain. And your finger is on one of these four planets. So move three times. One, two, three. Wonderful. You were briefly on Venus, but you're not there now. So let's take Venus away. We're down to three planets, but you only get to make one last move. So move once. And if I'm right, you're not on Saturn and you're not on Mars. I think you've traveled around the galaxy and returned home. You're on what Carl Sagan called the pale blue dot. You're on Earth, right? So thank you very much for playing along. Uh, we're gonna move in all the way to JPL, where I got the inspiration for this little piece. And uh, that concludes the magical portion of my uh, presentation. Did that work for all of you? Uh, I was on Vega. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Marco, what, yes. are you, what are you using to do all this? Right, so I use a combination of, of tools and I'm still kind of figuring out what the, the best proper tool set is to do this online so it can be really replicated easily by speakers. I imagine that we all, lots, lots of us are speakers and we do keynotes as part of how we uh, bring in revenue and connect to larger audiences. So I'm trying to figure out what will be the best kind of portable tool set which you can run on a MacBook Pro, which allows you to hold keynotes in a, in a virtual environment and have these kind of fancy video switching and interactivity in it currently. I'm using tools like virtual cameras and Wirecast and a tool called QLab. I'm happy to post my findings. I did that last week in the chat and I can do kind of a new list what the, what the tools of the week are I'm, I'm playing with right now. And I think uh, this could be super useful as we're gonna be for sure traveling less and uh, 
still having the desire to meet in, uh, in, in, in virtual venues and to do these kind of seminar, lectures, keynotes to, to audiences. I would like to take a few minutes to show a little bit about the work I'm doing at Accenture, yes. where this is also a very big theme for, for the organizations. I'm going to do this uh, in a kind of more traditional way and, um, and share my screen if uh, I can be uh, allowed to by the host. That would be me, right? I think you have power, buddy. To have power, yeah. Host disabled, attendee sharing. You got it? Let's see. No. Guys, help me out here. Try now, try now. Yeah, that's good. Let me share this. So this just Marco, does that bother you so much that PowerPoint and Keynote have not really changed much over the last decade? Yeah, it's a, it's really a missed opportunity, especially with all these like extended reality tools and like yeah. AR and VR coming online and so many, like even web browsers can display 3D content. So very quick uh, overview of what I do at Accenture and then maybe a quick demo of something I've been working on for the last two or three months, which is kind of topical to uh, what's going on with the COVID crisis. So I'm running this lab in Zurich, Switzerland, which does incubation and innovation in uh, extended reality as AR, VR, robotics. It's a very small team. Uh, that's me and Carmen, my girlfriend. And uh, we call ourselves the strike team. So we're uh, highly skilled uh, experts in, uh, in 3D and game design. Marco, run, run the presentation. Hmm? Run the, you want to run the presentation, don't you? Yes, you're, you're not seeing my screen yet, or? We're seeing your screen, but we're seeing each slide as uh, part of your, your PowerPoint. Okay, so you're not, you're not seeing the... No, I think maybe you're on the speaker side then. Oh, so I only have it in, in a single window. Oh, got it. So, yeah, so you're not seeing my cool slides going by? Oh, nope. sorry. That's a bummer. Let me try again. Let me see. Because they're pretty. Yeah, I know. We want to see it. <laughs> Can you see this? Yes. Now we got it, buddy. Okay, great. So this is the studio in Zurich. I'm going to go quickly. So I'm not use, uh, with my gang. Uh, that's the strike team. There's Carmen. We're going to meet Carmen in a little min in a minute in, in virtual reality. Um, we're working on immersive learning, which is super relevant right now. And people don't want to travel to remote sites and learn stuff. We try to figure out how to do immersive learning kind of after action reports and, and, and get analytics from what people do in VR. We're working on creating virtual humans, which are kind of quickly algorithmically created and can be inserted into these virtual reality environments. So they're kind of low poly, low compute power, but they look very good in VR in mobile headsets and can be connected to like uh, to an AI layer like Alexa scales or Google scales and so on. Then we're working another revenue we're looking at right now where we have a few things where Carmen is very strong in is using social media filters like Instagram and and Facebook have as possible platforms to do AR to reach very large audiences and do interesting things in that space, like building out whole apps on a platform, which is just created for filters. And there's a whole other uh, suite of things we've been working on, combining XR with robots and combining XR with, with indoor navigation and with uh, pre-sales and creating digital twins, which are connected to, to building information management systems. But I want to kind of zap out of this and give you a chance to see one of the tools we're super happy to have created. It's called Synapse and it's a immersive communication platform. And let me share my screen again. And so this is a live demo. So this is how this thing looks like. Can you see the interface? Yep, we got it. Great. So I can create a meeting and choose one of these environments. And some of these are flagship locations at Accenture. So we could visit the Zurich studio. So I'm going to create a meeting there. 
and they're going to be teleported from my desktop into this, uh, into this meeting. So the app works on PC, Mac, iPad, and of course on Oculus Quest. Um, so this is the environment. So we have very high realism uh, in, in, in respect to fidelity. I hope this is not too jerky for you. Oh, and Carmen just joined us. Carmen is in the living room next to me, but she's also wearing an Oculus Quest headset. So she's waving at me. And because I'm on a desktop and I don't have hands, I can just use this like emote menu and kind of wave at Carmen. Or I can see a multi view and I can see the both of us working here together in the room. We have presentation screens where we can pull up presentations. I can pull up the presentation I just showed you and show it to everybody in the room. So Carmen can enjoy it and I can enjoy it and so on. And then a very unique feature of Synapse is that we can teleport whole groups to new locations. So I can change the location, we go to single view and select another location. So for example, I could go to this lab here and I'm gonna be teleported to the south of France together with Carmen. And Carmen is here with me. She just showed up. Hey Carmen, how are you doing? The system does audio as well. And, uh, and then in these environments, we can host meetings with clients and kind of show them our technologies because we currently cannot invite them to these technology centers. So this is an excellent way to do that. And let me show you one of these demos, which is very quick. So here's a little demo which shows how a world gets actually digitized and how we create these virtual environments out of the real world. So we start with a very inexpensive prop, which is this Matterport scanner, which is used for real estate walkthroughs. And we use that and we kind of hacked these so we can create the sparse point cloud out of it, which can then be converted into a very kind of low polygon model. And we have a workflow which uses some AI and some, and some kind of human intervention to then out of these models create in a very accelerated workflow these very high quality, high fidelity virtual environments like the one we're in right now. And let's see, Carmen is still here. So this is kind of the functionality of what, what can be experienced. And then one last thing I wanna show you, I hope this is not too jerky. For me, this is very comfortable, like zooming around quickly on the desktop using arrow keys. So let me quickly show you the final thing, which is, um, we also created these imaginary locations where we can host virtual conferences. So um, let me go to the interface. Maybe Carmen, do you want to beam us to the, to the big meeting space? So Carmen is now selecting a new location for us on the world map. And um, it's going to change us into the big meeting space. So we just joined uh, a big meeting room where, where I'm currently standing at the lectern. Maybe I go off this lectern. Carmen, you want to start a slideshow for us at the lectern? So Carmen can go to, this, to the lectern and then present to a, very, on, to a large audience on a large screen. So this is kind of a little bit of a kind of insight into, into this tool, which is a, one of many we are creating at the studio for Accenture. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I had for today. <laughs> Did you have enough time, Marco? Yes, that was great. I hope yeah. this was kind of insightful for you guys. And, and now if we would want to build that ourselves, what, quarter of a million dollars and 70 employees? What do you think? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to brag about myself. No, it, I think typically this will be done by a company which maybe fry four to eight million dollars on this and might spend 12, 12 months or so. So we put this together in like three months with a team of eight. So uh, we're, we're super proud that it, it's worked so well and it's so robust and has a, a very delightful user experience. And uh, within the company, like we, we have like, we have 500,000 employees. So there are 160 lab locations. So the tool is now, now deployed and piloted. And we do not only these visits, we also have some stuff I couldn't show you, which are like the design thinking tools where you can do whiteboarding and, and putting post-its on big 
big maps. We have a mountain hey, retreat Marco. inside VR. So yeah, go ahead. Marco, if you're creating this, PwC is probably doing this or other big firms like yours are probably doing the same thing, right? Yes, exactly. So for, what we typically do is we try to find solutions which exist and then platforms which exist and then maybe create kind of the glue to, to create a reference architecture to put the, the good pieces together. In this specific case, we couldn't find a tool which had high enough fidelity, was on enough platforms, provided an easy workflow to digitize worlds and had this unique ability to teleport whole groups around the world. We call this kind of the innovation traveler architecture. So because that didn't exist, I decided to kind of give it a shot and try to build this myself for the time being until the space catches up to kind of the, the, the demands I have in respect to user experience. Marco, in a couple of weeks, can you do us a favor? Can you on a Wednesday night on Metal Connect, can you be in your laboratory and walk us through all the projects you're working on? Absolutely, yes. And I can, we, can, we can set you up with like desktop clients or with uh, Oculus Quest clients. So the, the headset that Carmen was wearing, is just, it's just like this, right? It's kind of a, a standalone headset. So it's actually my, my JPL one. Uh, you're, yeah, we, on tether, you're inside virtual office. reality. So you work in Oculus? Yeah, the Oculus Quest is just, so, it's inexpensive, it's like $500. You can send a whole box full. 200? 500 bucks. So it's super inexpensive yeah. and it's delightful. Actually, Carmen and myself, we use it to work out. So we, we meet together in VR and we run around and shoot zombies or do dance games. It's, uh, it's terrific while we're locked down at home. I love it. Marco, thank you so much for being part of this family. And that was awesome. Thank you and very much. Thanks for having me.